they're kind of moving into a transition here where the San Juan fire has been managed by the Fort Apache Tribal Air Council as well as the um, Apache Sitgrave National Forest. Yeah. The fire's blown up to 5,000 acres just in two days, so they requested our team to come in and help to manage with, with the complexity and the size of the fire. So at eight o'clock tonight, our type two incident management team will transition that fire. We've been briefed by the forest and by the tribe and by the BIA and by the Apache County Sheriff's of information. And now we're setting up an incident command post in Vernon at the school and we are going to transition to start taking over this fire to help them give them a hand here locally, help manage the size of it. The San Juan fire got burning today. It got after it quite a bit. It was really driven by the wind. Um, we had pretty strong winds coming out of the west that push it across our easterly containment lines. We had fire lines that were moving along the east and west flanks. Strong wind out of the west pushed it across those, those lines. Now it's moved into an untreated area. The, the treated areas are those that where they've got out ahead of time and thinned the forest, uh, do the prescribed burning during the winter time. Fires are bumping into that. This thing's been driven from the southwest by the wind the northeast side was starting to hit into a treated area and slow down. We're really looking at this being able to, to lay down a little bit, get out of the crowns. Sure enough, Mother Nature's in charge, right? Pushes real hard out of the west. Now it's pushing off to the east more and get into an untreated area. Now it's not only just that it's untreated, it's because we also have very dry conditions here, right? Absolutely. Because snow, we haven't had the monsoon season start yet. So. Absolutely. Wildfire is just a combination of Basically, we could talk about fuel, weather, and topography is a way to kind of break it down. We got steep slopes, fire burn faster up a slope than it does down a slope. The, the weather is a huge factor. We're in a persistent drought for many years. It's been a very dry winter, and it's not a surprise to anybody out here in the Southwest that it's fire season in Arizona right now. It's late June. It's hot. It's dry. One of the, the scientific measurements of, of fire behavior is called an energy release component. And that is how much of that fuel is actually available to burn. You know, in, in the winter and the spring, the green trees, they won't burn, just the dead, dry stuff on the ground. 97% of everything out there is available right now to burn. So I'm talking live trees, bushes, grass, everything's burning for us. And then of course, we've got the wind, the fuel, the topography are all pushing together to make this thing grow and push hard. We have three areas that are under mandatory evacuation. The the whiting, I put down my stuff, sorry about it, but you guys it's got it. Whiting Homestead. Whiting Homestead. Red, red Cabin Ranch. Red Cabin Actually, Ranch. I've heard it wasn't. And the Carlock Ranch. I heard it wasn't Red Rock Ranch. Red Cabin, Red Cabin they, Ranch. They said it was uh, actually Section 11, it's not Red Cabin Ranch, is what I saw on it. Red well, Cabin Ranch and Section 11 is what the Emergency County Management Team and like I said, this isn't even our fire yet. We'll transition to that at eight o'clock tonight. So some of these areas are very brand new to me, so I can't really expand on a lot of that stuff. But my but original question was- There's been 90 buildings that have been evacuated. Those are everything from homes to vacation homes to sheds. There's 90 structures in those three evacuation areas that have been evacuated under mandatory evacuation. Now there's two more areas that are under pre-evacuation orders. What will happen through the night? In the evening, typically the winds die down a little bit. The fuel moisture comes up. We get a chance to get a much better hand on the fire. Things settle down. The challenge with that though is working in the dark. Is it the type of terrain and area where we can put crews safely out onto the ground into an active fire? And we can't fly the, the air attack stuff at, at the nighttime. So fire lays down a little bit. We push back at it during the day. The fire pushes and it, and it takes the lead during the hot afternoon hours. This fire right now, the last couple days, the weather's been winning. The first two days of a fire like this, it's been tearing. We, we went from 1,500 acres to 5,000 acres this afternoon. The weather's winning, it's pushing, but we're ordering in resources. We're getting more people coming in. We're getting more horsepower coming here on the ground to be able to push back at this thing. And the projection predicted weather is for the winds to start settling down a little bit over the next few days. So we're feeling like we could get a pretty good hand on this thing, start pushing back once we have enough manpower to do so. 
They're talking about going into Dozer country this morning. Are the Dozers still making lines up towards the north end of the fire? Absolutely. To the north and northeast of the fire, where we're out into that flatter area and where it was treated, the Dozers can actually just work themselves right in between the well spaced out ponderosa pine and put out some pretty good line. It's when it pushed off to the east is when it got into that real thick stuff that you can't drive a dozer through because it's heavy with fuel. There's trees every few square inches. So again, it's the east and west flanks that the fire jumped and the north is still holding. Well, it, we never really had a line to the north. That was the head of the fire. That's where the fire has been mainly moving. We only had fire lines that we're working towards trying to make them containment lines to the east and west and now it's jumped across that easterly line. Are they going to continue to use the aerial attack? Absolutely. This is the type of fire with this terrain where air resources can be very helpful. You get that, that slurry onto the ground, it slows the fire down, allows the forces on the ground to get in there and, and get an upper hand on it. The 12 hotshot crews here once we get the slurry dropped down, they can get in and get line in and start slowing it down. We have five heavy air tankers working on the fire. One of them is a DC-10, what we call a VLAT, very large air tanker. Those things actually hold 11,700 gallons of slurry. That's a lot of slurry. It's quite a big load. They're, they're very effective and they're really cost effective. They actually cost less to operate than some of the other planes that handle less. But it's a DC-10. You can't exactly fly it through steep, mountainous, rugged terrain. We need big, open areas, like what we're seeing out towards the north, uh, out in front of the San Juan fire. You can get out in front of that stuff and lay a bunch of slurry down with a big plane like that can be effective. Yeah, when we get into the amazing. mountainous area back behind us, you'll see the seats, single engine air tankers. They're kind of like crop dusters. Those little quick planes, they can get down into small spots and hit it really good and hard and get out. So. All the different tools we use are effective for different situations. But those VLATs, the DC-10s, they're pretty neat to see. They, they get a lot of work done when the situation's right for them. Right now, the San Juan fire is the, the number one fire happening in the whole Southwest area. Absolutely, it's, it's uh, we've got the most resources. And fortunately, with the, all the energy components like I talked about here, and the fire danger being so high down in the Southwest, we've got a lot of resources from all over the country staged here in Arizona and New Mexico area. So we we're able to get them moving pretty quick. We just got some release from the Dijos fire and the other fires out here up by uh, Window Rock. So we've had resources come available. So we, we got it going on. The fire just broke over in New Mexico this afternoon and they did order up one of the air tankers and an air attack, a lead plane. I couldn't tell you if they took it from our fire or, or where they got them, but you know, they're dealing with some starts. Fire behavior and the weather that we have here is happening all around. So right now we're the biggest show in town, but as long as people are being dangerous and not being smart and, and with fire, there'll be other starts.